Hello and welcome to College Physics 2, Lecture 1, Experimenting with Charge. Physics 2 is quite a different course than Physics 1. While in Physics 1 we were focused more on mechanics involving motion, forces, um, and energy, Physics 2 shifts gears and talks more about electricity and magnetism. One issue that students tend to have with Physics 2 is that a lot of the concepts that we talk about are hard to visualize because we're talking about things like charge, which we can't really see. And because students are often visual learners, it's a little bit harder to push through some of this material, even though the math is no harder than it was in Physics 1. So uh, I will do my best to provide visual aids uh, as we go throughout these lectures, and hopefully uh, it's not too bad. So without with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this a little bit. So, you can receive a mildly unpleasant shock and even produce a small spark if you touch, say, a metal doorknob after scuffing your shoes across a carpet, especially in the winter. A plastic comb, for example, that you've run through your hair can even pick up some bits of pa small pieces of paper and other small objects. In both of these cases, the two objects were rubbed together. So, why should rubbing an object cause forces and sparks? And, what kind of forces are these? These are the questions that we'll begin to study in our discussion of electricity. Our first goal is to develop a model for understanding this electric phenomena in terms of charges and forces. Later on, we will take a deeper dive into the atomic level of what's happening, um, but for now, we want a basic visual overview of what charge and force is in terms of electricity. So, let's jump into this. I frequently say that the best way to learn physics is to do it. So we're literally, for this lecture, just going to do a bunch of experiments. So, what we're going to do is use a series of rods, some are plastic, some are glass, and fabrics. Some are wool or fur, and some are silk. And just by rubbing them in different ways, we're going to see a bunch of interesting things occur. So, experiment one. Suspend a plastic rod and bring a second plastic rod nearby. So you can see the video here on the right hand side. I have two random plastic rods. They're identical and they're just plastic rods, and so nothing's gonna happen just by bringing them near each other. This shouldn't be a surprise. They're just two plastic rods, so nothing happens. In terms of our discussion here with charge or electricity, what we would say is that they have no special electrical properties. In other words, we say that they are neutrally charged. There's no uh, positive charge, there's no negative charge built up on these objects, they're not being attracted or repelling each other, they're just existing. So, we say that they are neutral or neutrally charged. However, let's now take those same two plastic rods, but this time rub each of them with fur or wool, and then repeat the experiment. So here we have our same two plastic rods, I'm going to take each of them and rub them with fur. So, same two rods as before. But now, simply because I rubbed them together, notice that the rod on the stand is actually being repelled or pushed away from the one that I'm holding. So something changed. The rods are moving away from one another. The only thing that I changed in the experiment was that I rubbed them with wool. So clearly something happened because I rubbed them with wool. It changed the property somehow for there to be a force acting between the two rods. This process of rubbing is what we call charging. This is one way you can charge an object. And we say that the rod has acquired a charge as a result of this charging process. All right, so to charge something, you give it charge. That's what we're saying. Now, interestingly, and I'll play this one more time, notice that this was what we consider a long-range force. 
So I wasn't physically touching these rods together to push them, right? This was acting at some distance. So we call this a long range force. And in this case, we give it a name, the electric force. Now, this force could be repulsive, like we saw in this video, or it can also be attractive, like we will see in a future one. This is not the only long range force that we've seen before. In fact, right now we're all experiencing a long-range force that due to gravity. In other words, the weight of our bodies. Gravity is trying to accelerate us toward the center of the Earth. But that acts at a distance. You know, if you hold up your pencil up in the air and let go of it, it falls down toward the Earth. Nothing was physically there pulling it down. That was an attractive force. But we just saw uh, our first example of a repulsive long-range force. Anyways, I'm digressing a little bit. The point is, we were seeing a long-range force, and we charged the objects. Experiment 3. Slightly different. This time, I'm going to just use a different plastic rod. This is PVC instead. That doesn't have any implications, so I'm putting a plastic rod with wool again on the stand. This time, I'm going to bring a glass rod rubbed with silk nearby. So same setup, a plastic rod rubbed with fur on the stand, and now the glass rod rubbed with silk. So instead of repel, we are now seeing these objects attracting toward one another. I even reverse it here and have it uh, be attracted in the opposite direction, just to show that it works either way. So we have a new observation. If it lets me move on, there we go. The two rods are now attracting each other. In the previous one, they were repelling. Here, they're attracting each other. So we now have an indication that there's actually two different kinds of charge that these materials can acquire. We don't know, and this is really interesting, but we don't know from the video that I showed which one acquired a positive charge and which one acquired a negative charge. We know there's different ones now, but we don't know which is which, right? Because you're just looking at two rods. How would we ever know that one's positive or negative? There are ways you can determine this, and my students in lab will actually do that. But for the sake of time and clarity and things like that, I'm just going to tell you which is which for future reference in this video. The glass rod acquired a positive charge, the plastic rod acquired a negative charge, and they attracted one another. This highlights something you've certainly heard before. Like charges will repel one another, and opposite charges attract one another. So you've heard this before. Likes repel, opposites attract. So we are now seeing some really interesting results from these experiments, and it's just a couple plastic rods with fabric. This brings us to experiment four, which is kind of a two-parter. Here, we're going to increase the distance between the two plastic rods. To show you this visually, I am um, going to start both videos at the same time. The top video, I'm going to put the rods close together. The bottom video, I'm going to keep them further apart. And we should see something different happen simply based on how far away they are from one another. So I'm rubbing each to get them charged up. Up top, notice how fast that rod on the stand is spinning around because I've brought the rod close to it. But on the bottom, the rod was really far away. And so the rods did not spin as fast. So what this is showing us is that the further away the rod is, the weaker the force is, right? Because it didn't spin around as much. So there's some sort of inverse relationship between distance and force. The further away you are, the weaker it is. Uh, and so this actually shows up in an equation that we will build in our next lecture called Coulomb's Law. But we'll save that for then. The other part of this experiment, which is not really easy to show you in a video, so you'll have to take my word for this one. Um, but in this experiment, it just says to rub the rods more vigorously. And if you did this, the rods would repel one another even more, even more rapidly. And so what you're seeing in that case is more charge being put onto the objects 
so we get a greater force because of that. This also shows up in our equation. The more charge there is, the greater the force. So we're at a point now where we can start to discuss how we, were, how we will visualize charge moving forward. It's fairly straightforward, but generally speaking, anytime you have positive charge and you want to represent that visually on your paper or on the screen, we're going to use plus signs to represent the positive charges and appropriately minus signs or negative signs to indicate the negative charges. A very important note here, and this is something I emphasize in my, my class as well, neutral objects are objects that have equal amounts of positive and negative charges. They are not objects that have no charge. Right? Everything is made up of charges. We'll get to this more later, but there's protons and electrons and everything. So there are charges on neutral objects. They just happen to have equal amounts of both so that they basically cancel each other out. So it does not mean that there's no charge at all. Be careful with that, that idea. If you want to represent equal amounts of, plus, uh, of positive and negative charges visually, simply draw equal amounts of plus and minus signs. So in the image you see on the right, uh, the right-hand rod has six positive signs, the left-hand rod has six negative signs. That should indicate an equal amount between the two. Now, um, if we say something is positively charged, another technicality here, that doesn't mean it only has positive charges. It can still have negative charges in there. It just means that it has more positive charges or an excess of positive charges. So a positive object just has more positives than negatives. These are random numbers, but you could have 100 negative charges, but 150 positive charges, that's a surplus of 50 positives. So it's a positively charged object. So just be careful with those technicalities. This brings us to experiment five. This is an interesting one. So all we're going to do is use a single rod this time, the plastic rod that you see on the stand. I'm going to bring a, uh, a piece of fur nearby and nothing's going to happen. But then I'm going to rub them together and let's see what happens. So here I am, I'm just putting a piece of fur nearby. Nothing happened, because they're just two random objects, but now I charge them, bring them back together, and suddenly the rod's being attracted toward the fur that I used to uh, rub the plastic rod with. So we're seeing an attraction between the wool and the rod once they've been rubbed together. I said earlier that the plastic rod ended up with a negative charge. So if these are attracting one another and the rod is negative, remember that opposite charges attract, so the fur must have a positive charge. And this is very, very important. What we just saw was a process in which charge was transferred from one object to the other. They were both neutral to begin with. Then the rod became negative and the fur became positive. What happened there is negative charges left the fur to be added onto the rod, giving it a negative charge. But the fur lost that negative charge. By losing negatives, you become positively charged. Right? Just, I mean, just think of it, you know, if you're feeling kind of down, you're feeling kind of negative, and then you do something to take that negativity away, you feel more positive. And that's exactly what's happening with these charges here. The negative charges were lost from the fur onto the rod, giving the rod a negative charge, but leaving the wool behind with a positive charge. Opposites attract, and so we saw them move toward one another. So this concept of transferring charge highlights something very important, a new conservation law. In physics one, we did introduce conservation laws. We looked at, uh, for example, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Well, here we're looking at the idea of conservation of charge. You cannot create or destroy charge 
but you can transfer it. And the only way to do that is by physical touch or contact. So you need the two objects to be touching one another for that to happen. Removing charge from an object, uh, in this case, when, like we saw where we took charges away from the fur, that's called discharging. You're taking the charge away. Okay, so this brings us into the last part of our first lecture. There's still a few experiments left, but they're kind of with a, they're kind of in a different vein. So here, uh, we're gonna take these ones again are hard to show with video. There's no way to really prove this to you in a video unless it is a technical setup and it's too much time. So, um, in this example, what we'll do is take a charged plastic rod again, but this time we're gonna touch it to a metal sphere. So. The metal sphere is initially neutral, but then we touch a charged rod to it. Suddenly, those two objects start repelling one another. So as soon as you touch them together, they suddenly start repelling each other. So think about what that means. If we have repulsion, that means they must be like charges. So the rod is negatively charged. It then touches the metal, and then they repel each other. That means the metal must have acquired the exact same charge that the rod had so that they can repel. So a negative charge as well. Okay. This brings us to experiment seven. Same exact experiment. This time, all we've done is added in a second metal sphere connected to the first one by a plastic rod. So we take our charged rod, touch it to one of the metal spheres again. It gains that same charge but the other sphere connected by a plastic rod doesn't gain any charge. Only the one that was touched did. So what that's telling us is that, you know, we might have charges in this sphere here on the right, but they weren't able to move over to this other metal sphere, even though they're physically in contact. So something prevented those charges from moving over here. Now, Let's repeat this exact same experiment again, but swap out the plastic rod for a metal one. We do this experiment, we touch the charged rod to the first metal sphere, and now the other metal sphere gets that same charge as well. All the objects get that same charge. So now, all we did was swap plastic for metal, and now those charges were able to move into the other metal sphere. This is hinting at the fact that there's two different types of materials. This metal here allowed charges to flow, hence we call it a conductor. We'll show that in just a moment. The plastic rod didn't allow charges to flow through it to the other metal sphere, and we consider that to be a type of material known as, a, uh, as an insulator. So, these eight experiments, even though they're very basic in nature, have just taught us an immense wealth of information. So let's summarize all of this. This screen is gonna be completely full of text by the time we're done, so I broke it up one by one. Let's summarize our findings. First, processes such as rubbing, which is a frictional force, add or remove charge to or from an object. And that process of doing that rubbing is what we call charging. We then saw that the more vigorously you do this charging process or the rubbing, the larger quantity of charge that's present. So more charge is present if you uh, rub the objects more vigorously. We saw that there were two different kinds of charge. There's positive charges and negative charges. And these charges can interact with one another in one of two different ways. If the objects are similarly charged, so say both positives or both negatives, they will repel one another, like charges repel. However, if the two objects have opposite charges, so one's negative and one is positive, or one's positive, one's negative, they will exert an attractive force on one another. Like charges repel, opposite charges attract. These are what we call electric forces.
Now, this force between them is a long-range force, remember. I wasn't physically touching the rods together to move them. They were acting at a distance. So that's why we call it a long-range force. Furthermore, we saw that the further away the rods were from one another, the weaker that force was. So as you increase distance, you decrease the force. Another important technicality again is the fact that neutral objects have a mixture of both positive and negatives. It's not neutral because they have no charge. They have equal amounts of both. The rubbing process that we saw works by transferring charge from one object to another so that they acquire the opposite charge signs. And they transferred, but we weren't creating or destroying charge because Charge must be conserved. That is one of our conservation laws in physics. You can't create or destroy charge. But you can transfer it from one object to another by contact. We saw that in the last several experiments, when you tapped the rod to one of the spheres, it would gain that charge. And because we swapped out the plastic rod with a metal one, we saw that there were two different types or categories of materials, which we'll elaborate on more in a future lecture. Conductors are materials that allow charges to flow through or along them. And insulators, like the plastic, are materials in which uh, charges remain fixed. In other words, they don't allow charges to flow through them. So, the best way to learn physics is to do it. There's a bunch of basic experiments to help us get a foundation set up to move forward in our discussions with charge and electricity. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.